Good morning, everybody. So today we have a special guest with us. We have Mr. Mather, and he's going to be with us for the quarter. So I wanted to introduce him. He is a good friend of mine, and we've worked together for quite a few years now on different projects. And he's been here in the past working with us on the Tinker Yard. So I'm going to let him tell you a little bit about that project, what we've done so far. So the Tinker Yard is something that's been completely designed by students and built by students. It's just outside the windows of the engineering lab. There's lots of things to do out there that we call design thinking experiments. Design thinking stations that let us try out different ways of learning with materials. Now, I'm a sculptor. I make big public art projects. But here at Drew Charter School, we make sure that whatever those look like, they look good, they look interesting, but there's also something to do. There's also something that you can change, that you can build, that you can take off and add on. And that's how we've come up with the plans for this Tinker Yard. We're not the only cool thing happening outside these windows, though, with the Tinker Yard. There's also a raised bed garden program that's been coming along and doing really well. We're looking for a way that you can design something that helps to connect what happens in the Tinker Yard and what happens in the raised bed gardens. And Ms. Bryant has an idea for you to work on. I'm a teaching artist here in Georgia. I've been a teaching artist for the Georgia Council for the Arts for many years, as well as for some other programs, including out of the Woodruff Arts Center. Being a teaching artist is a, is a role where people might think that we're art teachers, because it sounds similar, but we are actually co-teachers with educators. Raise your hand if you are part of the garden program or you have worked in the garden here at the school before. Excellent, all right, show me you're ready. Okay, so what, what I need to have happen today is some of you guys are going to be our experts because you've worked in the garden before. Um, we actually are going to be working on a project to help our gardeners. One of the things that I noticed and our master gardener, Ms. Gomes, noticed um, is that all of the garden supplies end up spread out all over the tinker yard. And one of the things that I would like to provide for her is a storage location for those garden supplies. And she would like that very, very much. She also noted that, we, that the garden program actually needed a place to work. So because they were they are all over the place using different parts of the tinker yard to work on. And it's not actually, we're in the way of each other. So. She has suggested a site, but I've put together for you guys uh, our brief. And remember, the brief is what we start with whenever you're a designer. Your client comes to you with an assignment, and that assignment tells you what things you need to look at and what things you need to pay attention to. Whenever I introduce a lesson to students, I always bring it to the group in a similar way that they would do in industry. We have industry partners that we work with here at Drew that are part of our advisory board. And in talking with them, we get real world scenarios at times. And then I ask them how they might approach uh, that situation or what it looks like in industry. And so a lot of those aspects then translate into the classroom with students. So they're getting some exposure to how it really works. As we were talking, Cooper, to Ms. Gomes, as I was talking with her, some things that came out of the conversation um, include these things. So I would like for Linda, would you read the first sentence in our brief? Drew Charter School has a working garden for students to utilize during the day and after school. Excellent, thank you. And then the next sentence for me, Axum, would you get that? Each season some old plants are removed and new plants are added. Very good. The next sentence for me, Maya. Tools are used for this, and a table would be useful for preparing the plants. Okay. Sam, would you get the next sentence for me, please? What could we make to store the tools and provide a workspace for the gardeners? Very good. So here's some questions that I had and Ms. Gomes had as we were talking about the project. Um, so would you read the first question, Avery? What? Recycled materials could we use? And that's a big part of the Tinker Yard already. We have a lot of things that come from recycled materials out there. So in looking around the school, what, what things might we be able to use? Um, so who can tell me something that you know we have a lot of that we could probably use um, for, for our, and I'll give you a hint, there's a picture up there 
uh, of um, one up on the, on the board. Uh, let's see here, Ellis. Wait, what? Yeah, wood. There's a lot of this type of wood. What is that wood usually configured in? Tyler? Pallets. Pallets, yes. At the beginning of the school year, every year we get a bunch of supplies delivered like paper and things like that and they come on pallets. This would be something that we could use that would normally go to the landfill and we could keep it out of the landfill and use it for good purpose. All right, the next question on there, Biko. Um, what can we do to make it un user user friendly and durable yes does anybody know what that word durable means durable sam do you want to make a guess i think it means um if it's like it stays there it doesn't fall down exactly it doesn't fall down it stays strong year after year raise your hand if you want the project to last for longer than just this year I'm glad I see a lot of hands up because that's the goal, guys. It needs to last for longer than just this year. Um, and then the last question, Zelda. How will it be unique? What's the word unique mean? Uh, Noah, I mean not Noah, excuse me, Nia. Um, unique means like cool, cool and pretty. Yeah, cool and different, pretty looking, interesting looking. Go ahead. Original. Original, that's a good synonym. Okay. Um, the last one, I'm going to reiterate this to you because I want to make sure everybody hears this. Your goal is to create a workspace slash tool storage solution that is user friendly, durable, and relates to the parts already in the Tinker Yard. Is that, is that, everybody give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're doing. Excellent. Show me that you're ready. Perfect. When they get the brief, there are some questions that are initially there. Then part of the research process is not just going to the computer but asking uh, members of the community who might serve as a resource. All right, so our next activity, uh, we are going to connect with one of our professionals who's going to be helping it, us on this project. Remember we talked about Ms. Gomes and her being a master gardener. Well, I've asked her to come in and talk to you guys, uh, but in advance of her doing that, we're going to get her some questions and I'm going to send them to her in our email. So I'm going to ask you guys to tell me some questions that you might have before we build our garden bench that would help us know how to build it so that it would be exactly what the gardeners need. So Maya, what's your first question? Is there any particular color? Okay. Is there a particular color? Okay, thank you, Maya. Uh, Myron. How will you put the garden bench into the ground? Okay, so how should it be connected to the ground? Okay. Thank you, Myron. All right, let's see here. Zelda? What length should it be? Ah, that's a very good question. What length should it be? Let's see here, next line. What length? should it be very good you guys are coming up with some great questions avery how tall should it be how tall should it be very good how tall okay uh tyler real nice and loud for me um how do we keep the tools in? oh so um how do we keep the tools stored in it okay all right, uh, Susanna, roll it loud. What shape should it be? I like that question. What shape? When we're talking about sculpture, Mr. Mather would be happy about that question. What shape should the bench have? Okay, all right, let's see here. Biko, real nice and loud for me. How many hinges should we have? Oh, should we have, I have a question before that. Um, hinges. What do we have to have to need hinges? Doors. Excellent. Now, do we know whether we even want doors? No. No. So maybe we need to ask that. What should the question be? Should we have doors and then hinges? Yeah, I think so. Let's ask that. Would you like doors and should it have hinges? Uh, let's see here. Nia. What 
what material should it be made out of? That's an excellent question. You guys are coming up with some great questions. What materials should it be made out of? Okay. Um, they interviewed uh, one of our, our master gardener and that was certainly a resource, but they also needed to even see what a garden bench looked like because many of them had never encountered that term before. And so in the search process, then they can get a visual to go along with it, see what some of the features might be. And then oftentimes what happens in that situation is they start to see, oh, there might be even more questions that I have after seeing and experiencing it um, in a different way.